Hey guys, um, welcome back. So today we are going to continue talking about ratios. Um, so you can start with this warm up um, to just give a little bit of a review from last class. So um, if you are at home, just go ahead and pause this video, complete this warm up, and then you can jump back on to this video um, and continue. All right, so now that you have done the warm up, um, let's move on to our notes. So if you can, um, I would really strongly suggest printing these notes out. Um, if you don't have a printer, that's okay. You can still um, you can still read make this on scratch paper and follow along with the video. Now you don't need page two. I should have gotten rid of page two and three. You don't need to print page two. We're just going to be looking at page one today. All right, so let's jump into it. This is um, the slideshow that your classmates are seeing, so I just want to share that with you so that you um, know what I'm expecting of them. Um, our notes today are going to be going into page 21 for Miss Waters' class. If you're in a different teacher's class, then um, you can message that teacher, Miss Simmons or Miss Kelly, and you can ask them what page these notes goes in. I think we're a little bit off on our page numbers. And then they're completing the warm-up that you guys just completed. So um, just a little review from the last lesson. I want to talk to you guys about how to determine if a ratio is equivalent. Is equivalent. We talked about what equivalent ratios are. They are ratios that simplify to the same ratio. Um, and so I noticed that in class, at least, um, we had a little bit of a hard time identifying whether or not um, ratios were equivalent. So that being said, we have some examples here that I want to work through together. This isn't on your notes. This is just a quick review. So <clears throat> the first one, we have 1 to 4 and 5 to 20. So there are two different ways that we can um, find an equivalent ratio. Remember, the first way is, um, and I'll write them down right here in the middle. The first way is we can try to multiply by the same number. And by the same number, I mean I, we would have to multiply the same thing on the top as we do on the bottom because that's going to keep our ratio equivalent. If we multiply by something different on the top than on the bottom, then it's not going to be equivalent anymore. Now, the second way we can identify equivalent ratios is to simplify. Okay, and when we're simplifying, we are trying to divide by the same thing on the top and the same thing on the bottom in order to reduce that ratio. So let's look at this first example. I like to try step one first or option one first. I like to see, okay, if I'm trying to determine if these two are equivalent, I want to try to check and see, well, what's a way that I could multiply from one to get to five. Okay, one times five is five. So if I can easily see a way to jump and, and multiply from one to five, then I'm going to I'm going to use option one. And so if I'm multiplying by five on the top, I should be multiplying by five on the bottom. Okay, so what is four times five? Well, it is 20. So do you guys think that these two ratios are equivalent? Yes, they are. So we're going to put an equal sign in that circle. Okay, let's take a look at this next one over here. 6 to 8 and 10 to 15. Okay, so what I like to check first is can I multiply easily? Can I get from 6 to 10? Uh, I don't really, I can't think of anything that I could really multiply by. So because that's not going to work, I'm going to have to use option two. So I'm going to have to take a look and see, well, could I simplify these ratios? So let's take a look at six to eight. Okay, I want to think about what can I divide 
6 and 8 both by in order to simplify this ratio. Now, a, bit, a dead giveaway are both of these numbers are even. And so anytime you have two even numbers, we can divide by 2. All right, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. So this ratio, 6 to 8, reduces to 3 to 4. Now we need to see if we can simplify the other ratio. Okay, can you guys think of anything that we can divide into both 10 and 15? We cannot use 2 this time because 10 is even, but 15 is not. Since 15 is not even, 2 will not work. We've got to come up with something else that can divide evenly into both of these numbers. Well, we can divide both of them by the common factor of 5. So when we do this, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So when we simplify these ratios, we really have 3 to 4 and 2 to 3. Do you guys think that these are equivalent? No, this one is not equivalent, so I'm going to use the not equal to sign. All right, I want you to pause the video and try this next one. Um, use one of these strategies to see if you can identify if these um, are equal. Okay, so now that you've tried this one on your own, I always like to start with option one. It's a little bit easier for me to think about, so I'm going to see how can I multiply from three to get to nine. can multiply by... 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So then I need to do the same thing on the bottom. 9 times 3 is not 12. 9 times 3 is 27. So because I got something different than what is actually there, do you think that these are equivalent? No, they are not equivalent, so I'm going to use the not equal to sign. All right, I want you to pause the video and try this next one. All right, now that you have tried that one on your own, um, let's start together. So I always start with, okay, can I multiply from 2 to 3? No, I can't really think of anything that we can multiply by to get from 2 to 3. You can always try the bottom too, but I can't think of anything to multiply from 10 to 15. So instead, we're going to have to use option 2, and we're going to need to simplify. So when we're simplifying, we're trying to decide what can divide into both of these. Well, because they're both even, I can divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is five. So this simplifies to one to five. Now let's look at the next um, ratio. What can go into three? What can divide into three? That can also divide into 15. So a common factor. Two is not going to work because both of these numbers are odd numbers. That's usually my starting point. Because I can't use two, I've got to think about something else. Well, the factors of, of three are one and three. So could 3 work? Can 3 go into 3 and 3 goes into 15? It does. So we can divide both of these by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So because this one simplifies to 1 to 5, and so does this one, these are equal. All right, now let's take a look at... The next slide. Um, so using that kind of information, um, we need to talk about um, these tables. Okay, so some, um, some students had a hard time yesterday or the day before um, when, okay, we have this problem here. We can't, in this table, we can't think about what we multiply by to get from four to seven. Well, that just means we need to simplify this ratio first, 4 to 8. We need to try to go backwards first before we can go forwards because there's nothing that we can multiply by off the top of our heads to get from 4 
to 7. So instead, I need to simplify. I need to go backwards. So I need to think about what can I divide. I'm going to get rid of that. What can I divide into 4 that can also divide into 8? Okay, we can divide by... I would divide by the biggest, the greatest common factor, which would be 4. You might have seen 2 at first, but because 4 is bigger, let's go with that one. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and then 8 divided by 4 is 2. So our ratio here is 1 to 2. So now that we know... Now that we know the simplified ratio... It's going to be a lot easier to make the jump from 1 to 7. So you have to find a path that you can easily multiply to get there. So 1 times 7 can get us to 7. Whatever you do to one side, you need to do to the other. So we're going to multiply 2 times 7, and we get 14. Okay, so anytime you can't move forward because you can't multiply... Um, moving forward, you might have to go backwards first and simplify the ratio that you have. Okay, let's try this next one. So we have 10 to 6. Okay, can we multiply easily to get from 10 to 20? Yes, we can just multiply by 2. So whatever you do to the top, you're going to do to the bottom. So 6 times 2 is 12. All right, now can you think of something to multiply by 6 times what would get you to 14? I can't think of anything, but what about 12 to 14? I can't think of, an, of anything there either. So, because there's no way to move forward to get to 14, we are going to have to see if we can move backwards first. Okay, how can we simplify the ratio 10 to 6? What can divide into 10 that can also divide into 6? Well, they're both even, so I like to start with that 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our simplified ratio is 5 to 3. Now that we've gone backwards, we can try to move forward. So is there something that you can, um, oh no, there's not a good way to get, I'm sorry y'all, I should have chosen a different number than 14, so we're going to scribble that out, and we're going to think of something different like 15, it should have been 15 instead of 14, my bad. Alright, so 3 times what would get to 15? 3 times 5. I know y'all can't really see that. Times 5. Okay, so whatever you do to the bottom, you're going to do to the top. So up here, we're going to multiply by 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Sorry to confuse you. If we use 14, that is not actually going to be a good part of this ratio. I should have used 15. All right, let's move on now to our actual notes for today. That was just a quick review. So today we are going to be um, looking at tape diagrams and double number lines. Um, in this first video, let's just focus on um, the tape diagrams for now. So hopefully you were able to print out that paper. If not, you're going to have to just get some scratch paper and pause the video and write the problems down as we go. Um, so the ratio here of boys to girls in a class is 5 to 2. If there were 15 boys in the class, how many girls are there? Now, what we're going to do first is we are going to label our tape diagram. I have this one set up for you. You won't always have them set up for yourself. But the ratio of boys to girls is 5 to 2. So looking at this picture, I want you to think to yourself, Okay, which row right here would represent the boys? Okay, so if the boys is listed first, 
That means the first number in our ratio represents the boys. So five represents the boys. So if we look here, we have one, two, three, four, five boxes on top. So this is going to be the boys. That means the girls will be down here with the two. So off to the side, we just label so we can keep track of what these different boxes are representing. Now, the second sentence says, if there are 15 boys in the class, how many girls are there? We know that there are 15 boys. So all of these boxes on the top are representing our boys, these five boxes. So that means this whole row on the top is going to be equal to 15 from the start over here all the way to the end over here. But down here, we don't know what these two boxes would represent for the girls. That's what we are looking for. That's our question mark because it says how many girls are there? All right, so now we have our ratio, sorry, our table, our tape, I can't talk, our tape diagram set up. Now we need to solve. So here's how we solve. We know we have one, two, three, four, five boxes that equals 15. So we're trying to think to ourselves, five times what would equal 15? In other words, how many boys would fit into each box if there needs to be the same amount of boys in each box? Well, five times three would equal 15, so that means three boys are going to go in every single box. Now, because these boxes up here are the same size as these boxes down here, there's also going to be three girls in each box. So down here, if we have two boxes that has three girls each, how many girls do we have in total? Six. Three plus three, or three times the two boxes, is going to give us six girls. Now, you can, as you guys work through these, you can have a beautiful tape diagram, but if you don't go back and actually answer the question, then you did not solve the problem. So make sure you always go back to the question part and answer what they're asking you. It says, how many girls are there? So that's why I wrote out six girls. That's, that's the answer to our actual question. Um, the, the process, we use the tape diagram. Okay, let's try another one. All right, so this one, I'm gonna have you guys helping me draw this on your own using these steps, okay? So we have these steps here. Um, let's read the problem together. So the recipe for lemonade calls for two cups of lemon juice and three cups of water. If there are 15 cups of water, how many cups of lemon juice are there? Okay, let's first try to look at what we have here. We, we want to try to think about what our ratio is. We have two cups of lemon juice and then three cups of water. So step one, it says draw your tape diagram. Your boxes must be lined up and they need to look about the same size. So we have our first number, we have two boxes because of those two cups of lemon juice. Okay, so there's my two cups of lemon juice and off to the side, let's write LJ for lemon juice. All right, then we have three cups of water. So we wanna try to make our, our boxes the same size. So here's one box, two boxes, and then we need a third box for the water. Okay, and I'm going to put a W over here for water. So make sure you label your boxes so you know what they are um, talking about. Now, step two says fill in the information you know. Remember, order matters. Make sure you label. Well, we've already done that as we drew it. That's what's helpful to me is as I'm drawing it, I'm saying, okay, two cups of lemon juice. Well, I'm going to go ahead and label that lemon juice so I don't forget what that is. Okay, now how, let's read our second sentence. If there are 15 cups of 
water. So this is representing the water. Okay, so down here, we're going to have a little line all the way that goes all the way across to represent these three whole boxes. Okay, so we have 15 cups of water. How many cups of lemon juice are there? So up here, we're trying to find how many cups of lemon juice we need, right? Or how many there are in our recipe. Well, to find this out, it says, okay, step three, use the information to find the value in each piece of tape. So before we can find how much lemon juice there is total, we need to know how much water goes in each piece of tape here in each box. And then that would correspond up here since the boxes are the same size. So down here we have three boxes that equals 15. So three times what in each box will equal a total of 15 cups of water. Well, if we divide this up, there should be five cups of water in each box because three times five equals 15. Now, because these boxes are the same size up here, these are also equal to five. So step four, answer your problem and remember your units. What do you think how many cups of lemon juice do we have in total right here? Five plus five is 10. So answer your question, 10 cups of lemon juice. That's the answer to our question. Alrighty, let's look at the next problem together. So in Mr. Ramirez's auto shop class, the ratio of boys to girls is five to two. Okay, if there are 35 students in the class, how many boys are there? All right, so our ratio of boys to girls is five to two. So the boys, that comes first. So the first number is gonna represent our boys. Okay, that means the five boxes up here should represent the boys. All right, then the two is for our girls. So that's why I'm going to label the two boxes down here, girls. Now it says, if there are 35 students in the class, how many are boys? Now, this is a little bit of a different type of problem because in the word students, is that telling us just the boys? Is that telling us just the girls? No, that means both the boys and the girls. So I can't label my 35 down here where it's just showing the girls and I can't label it just up here where it's only showing the boys. All seven of these total boxes makes up the whole class of students. So that means all of these boxes will represent the 35. So I'm going to label it off to the side over here so that I'm remembering that that 35 is really representing all of the boxes. Now there are a total of how many boxes in our picture? Seven. And we need to think about well seven times what would equal 35 because we want to figure out how much is each piece of tape worth? Well, seven times five is 35, so each piece of tape is worth five students. Okay, now that we know that there are five students for each box, now we need to go back and answer our question. It's asking how many are boys? So let's just look at the, the row for boys now and add them up. Five plus five plus five plus five plus five. Or you can just do five times the five boxes is 25. So make sure you actually answer the question with your units though. How many were boys? 25 boys. Okay.
All right, so this one says draw your own tape diagram and solve. So this one, you're going to have to, um, I want you to try to pause the video and see if you can draw it on your own and then you can pick back up with me. All right, the ratio of pink roses to yellow roses in a flower arrangement is five to three. All right, so um, let's pause there and we want to try to figure out, well, what do these numbers represent? What does the five represent? Oops, don't go on yet. Okay, so the five should represent the first thing that is listed. So it says the ratio of pink roses. So the five is going to represent the pink, and that means the yellow roses are the three. So let's go ahead and draw our tape diagram. That means we need five boxes for the pink. And then we need three boxes for the yellow. So we have pink to yellow. So um, the second sentence says, if there are 15 yellow roses, then how many total flowers are in the arrangement? So we know that there are 15 yellow. So down here, we know that there are 15 total yellow. And we're looking for the total flowers in the arrangement. So first, we need to figure out, well, how many flowers goes in each piece of tape? So we need to think about we have three boxes times what would equal 15? Three times five. So we have five flowers in each box. Because they're the same size boxes up here, we're also going to have five roses in each of those boxes. Now, your first um, thought might be to just go ahead and tell me how many pink roses there are because that's what you might be a little used to. Well, that's fine. You can tell me that. So we have five times five would be 25 pink roses, but that's not really what the question is asking for. It wants to know how many total flowers are in the arrangement. That means we are going to have to add up all of the boxes. We want to know all of the flowers, so pink and yellow. So that means you can either add your 25 plus your 15, or you can just count up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 total flowers. All right, so this is going to be the end of the video for just tape diagrams. Okay, you can pick up, I just want to kind of break it up for you because I know that these videos can get long. So um, take a quick break and then you can join back with the double number lines video.